Hey everybody, it's Macro. We did it. We finally hit 1 million subscribers. And it's kind of incredible, but also kind of like unreal. When I first started YouTube, I didn't know what I was going to do. I initially was making videos about movies. I did a whole series on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I was going to try to explain every single movie in that universe. Obviously, that doesn't exist anymore. Those videos have since been deleted. And at a certain point, I did kind of give up. I literally released videos. They got no views and I just moved on. It wasn't until I made that one goofy kind of a meme video, Top 100 Overwatch Heroes, that I kind of started making videos again, because that video at the time blew up. It had 20,000 views, which in my head was like, whoa, that's crazy. That's an insane amount of views. And so right after that, I released a video called Overwatch Makes No Sense. And that actually blew up. Like it got a million views within a week or two. And this was just me giving my last try, you know, and to see it do so well to to this day, it's still my most viewed video is insane. So I thought that since I hit a million subscribers, a fun special would be for me to do one more makes no sense video for you guys. And this time the topic isn't a specific video game, but video games in general. I asked my YouTube friends what they thought makes no sense about their favorite video game and asked them to make their own segment about it. And I think they came out pretty great. So once again, thank you so much for a million subscribers and I hope we can see a million more. But now enjoy the show. the best game ever made, and if you disagree, you're simply wrong because opinions don't matter to me. The Master Chief, or John117, or Mr. Oh, I was kidnapped as a child and made into a soldier. Whatever you want to call him, we all know the guy, okay? He's a badass that can survive massive falls, alien attacks, and the cold vacuum of space. But he also makes no goddamn sense. Because if this man touches as much as a drop of water, he instantly perishes. The goddamn scientists that gave him the armor didn't think to give him an ability to allow him to swim? Oh, he's gonna save the universe and kill all the Covenant. What if he has to fight a goddamn kiddie pool? So apparently, according to these papers here, he can survive in the water because he can sink to the goddamn bottom like the metal cap in Mario 64. But if there's no immediate slope for him to walk up out of, he's gonna run out of oxygen. With all the Billions of dollars that went into this suit. They didn't think to put in like jets or something or like goddamn floaties And don't even get me started on multiplayer if your toe touches any water you're gonna be hit with that <laughs> Hey, I'm Yako you can slap the initials on the end if you want but hurry up and hop in because we're taking a trip back to 2005 <laughs> In Chibi Robo, you play as a house cleaning companion robot purchased by Mr. Sanderson, the man of the house, as a birthday gift for his daughter who only speaks in Hello. Japanese frog Hello. noises. Hello. Man, this is a cool concept. I wonder what action packed gameplay is in store. You can pick up trash and scrub stains off the floor with a toothbrush, and you can. Uh, you can die. Alongside all sorts of wacky antics, you'll watch as Mr. Sanderson's wife locks herself in her room and demands a divorce because Mr. Sanderson won't find a new job and keeps spending all his money on toys. But hey, maybe I can talk more about the toys that come to life. That's pretty fun. Why has the entire family been kidnapped by robot spiders? Play silly mini games with great music like the one where you have to stop a hot rod on the very edge of a deadly drop. platform and climb up cabinets and furniture as if they were massive buildings. It's like Assassin's Creed, but it's a good game. <laughs> and then call strawberry aliens down to earth in the backyard and have them fulfill the wish of completely eliminating the laws of thermodynamics to somehow give every robot on the planet infinite battery power. Chibi Robo makes absolutely no sense and I love it to death. After explaining all that, I still can't figure out why it didn't sell very well. Yeah, it even has anime. I'm stumped on this one. 
Majora's Mask makes no sense. I mean, I love it. It's my favorite piece of media ever made and all that, blah, blah, blah. But sometimes I just have to pull this game aside and ask it, are you kidding me? Are you out of your mind? I think one of the best examples of how bonkers this game can be is with the Deku Princess. Picture this. You just beat a pathetically easy boss and saved the swamp from being all gross and stuff. Now all you have to do is take this princess back to her father, the Deku King, and stop him from boiling a monkey alive. All right, makes sense so far. So I guess this is going to be an escort mission where we lead the princess back to the king's palace? <laughs> no, you fool. You need to stick this princess inside this tiny ass bottle, which she somehow fits in perfectly. Not a single thing about this situation makes any sense. The N64 can't even process the fact that you did this, so it doesn't even render a tiny version of her inside the bottle. It just displays her as brown goo. What the hell? To make this even worse, you don't actually have to return her to her father. It's not required to beat the game. You can just hold her captive for the rest of the three day cycle like the maniac kidnapper that you are. Fortunately, the the game says no to you trying to sell her on the black market, but it does let you sell unborn Zora children, so that's kind of shady. God, this is like that one time Carl had a tiny version of Jimmy's mom in a jar. Link, you sick freak, I can't believe you've done this. Okay, but other than this sh it's a pretty good game, I swear. Team Fortress 2 is one of my favorite games, period. Even though the game came out 14 years ago, I still think it has better team versus team combat than majority of newer releases. And the whole game doesn't make sense to be clear. They have you eat sandwiches and gains health. Like it's not a realistic game. But I think some of the weapons really don't make sense. For example, sun on a stick, a scout weapon, you take 25% reduction overall damage for guaranteed critical hits on burning enemies. Scouts can't light people on fire. This weapon is worthless. And the Flogistinator is a pyro weapon that is completely overpowered. How do you pronounce that? Basically, as pyro uses the Flogistinator, it has a meter that gets charged up. And once it's charged, pyro can unleash enough critical damage to wipe out an entire team. that is completely overpowered. Yo, what up? I'm Grizzly, and you're watching The Macro Channel. One of my favorite games is Catherine. It's made by the same people who made Persona 5. Recently, I've played the game's expansion, Catherine Full Body. And you wanna know what doesn't make any sense in this game? Spoiler alert. Nothing! And that's an actual spoiler alert, by the way. Because in Catherine, you play as Vincent, who dreams about climbing blocks in his underwear because he wants to escape the responsibilities of being in a serious relationship. Up top, am I right, fellas? Except in these dreams, everyone is a sheep, and if you die in the dream, you die in real life. So like, what the f- <sighs> Now, Vincent's girlfriend, Catherine, is a real- <laughs> And he accidentally cheats on her with another girl named Catherine, who is actually a demon succubus that causes these nightmares to unfaithful men. And if that's not bad enough, he lives next to another girl named Ren. Catherine! So the first two Catherines are batshit insane and toxic people, so naturally Vincent begins to fall in love with the third Catherine, the girl next door. Except this Catherine isn't a girl! Lil Ren Ren! is a dude and this really throws my man vincent for a loop but ultimately besides love is love and it doesn't matter alexa play the baby let's go plus this catherine is in all of vincent's nightmares helping him reach the top by playing the piano does this make sense so far so anyways remember how rin was now a dude well not anymore catherine is a literal holy angel now you know this because her big angelic megatron brother threatens to rain actual meteors on the earth because he doesn't want Catherine to fall in love with a human. Remember those other two Catherines? <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> so Vincent has to go through this guy's trial and show Rin Rin's big bro that he's got big balls. You go through tons of near death experiences and practically beat a god for the sake of your love. Can I get an amen? Only to find out that Rin Rin is not a girl, not a dude, not an angel. Catherine and their big brother are extraterrestrial alien life forms and then you get married in space. <sighs> I hate anime. This makes no sense. Zenyatta is an Omnic monk who hopes to change those who interact with him for the better. He is on a path for spiritual enlightenment, to form people and Omnics into an equal relationship so a better society can be created. This is why he is a hero that heals others through harmony. Once he has healed enough people, he can achieve transcendence. This is absolute bullshit.
Zenyatta actually reaches, quote, tranquility by killing his enemies faster than he does by healing his allies. He bashes through people's skulls with his balls. It's almost as if he's a vampire that gains power from the blood of his enemies, just like Reaper does. I mean, both of their ultimates are circles of health and death. And speaking of Reaper's ultimate, why am I taking damage if the shotgun isn't even pointing at me? This is because Reaper's true identity is actually James McAvoy, who can curve his bullet in the movie Wanted. Why did the frog cross the road? No, seriously. Why did the frog cross the road? I've been thinking about it ever since Macro told me about this video, and I, I just can't make sense of it. Frogger makes, makes no sense. sense. What is on the other side of this road and river that is so important for this frog to get over there, huh? There, there are cars, there are trucks, there's logs, there's goddamn crocodiles in there. What is this, f***ing Florida? Florida? Florida doesn't even exist. Is it your home? Is it your home you're trying to get to on the other side of this road? Then why did you cross the road in the first place? Why did you put yourself into this position where you have to cross the road again? This is a freeway in Florida. Are Florida frogs just built different? Tell me your secrets, frog. I need to know. Why did you cross the road? <laughs> Why? Yo, my name is King Ana, and one of my favorite games growing up was Harvest Moon DS. Very similar to Stardew Valley, you farm, mine, get friendly with the townsfolk, and find someone to marry. One of the hardest people to marry was the Witch Princess and the Harvest Goddess. The Witch Princess was a bit odd though. If you as a player are interested in wooing this stuffed animal collector, then you have to prove your affection for her by slaughtering 50 of your own animals. If that wasn't bad enough, the player also has to pass out from exhaustion 100 times, litter 10 times, and poison entire village by donating a poisonous mushroom to this dude during the harvest festival before she even agrees to be the player's wife. Yeah, this is a kid's game. I played this when I was 10. Just murdering animals and poisoning people? Nah, I picked Leia, the mermaid, of course, because <laughs> just look at her. She's adorable. So we already know sliding doesn't make sense in Apex Legends. Without pain, the body suffers in silence. But what makes even less sense is bunny hopping. How is it that legends can hop around so effortlessly? Maybe they all just have really strong legs, right? Some legends even have robotic legs. But then you realize they're not even jumping. They're bouncing off of their knees. And it's always the same knee. I know what you're thinking, it's just some unintended mechanic that Respawn forgot to remove, but that's where you're wrong. They did remove it accidentally and they added it back that very same day. So they clearly accept bunny hopping as something legends actually do. But how do they do it? I thought about this way too much and the answer is obvious. Every legend has knee pads, not one single skin has their bare knees showing. So it's clear to me somebody built every legend a mini jump pad to slip under their knee pad. Oh except that one Gibraltar skin, but come on, look at the strength in those legs. You can't really get those kind of muscles without bouncing everywhere on your knees, let's be honest. What's gunkin sludgers and slobbers? My name is Slimesicle and one of my favorite games is Dying Light, a survival horror game released in 2015 where you do sick parkour and uh, beat up really sick people. You play as Kyle Crane, an elite secret GRE operative so deep undercover, he's actually forgotten how to do anything. How do I climb over small objects? They didn't go over this stuff at the GRE. Can you help me, Breck? And I hear you're just a go goddamn parkour, parkour instructor. You drop into the city of Haran where a bunch of guys drop you and a zombie drops its teeth into the guys and then the government drops the only cure to prevent the drop from undropping, but you drop it into the fire because the government tells you to. What? Oh, look guys, it's a volatile. They're weak to black lights. Bro, is that cum? <laughs> There's also more types of zombies that don't make sense. Boomers? Hey, stop blaming the millennials for everything. Hazmat zombies? They probably died because their oxygen tanks were full of propane. Either way, you want to run away from them since you can parkour over the entirety of the city in 20 seconds, but swinging a wrench five times causes you to go into cardiac arrest. And running from them couldn't be easier. Just roll! That's how parkour works, baby! Even if you jump straight down! When you do a parkour roll, you need horizontal momentum because otherwise you're just breaking your shins and then saying, guess I'll fall over forwards. But, 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 but that's fine. You know, what if dying light doesn't make sense? What does? Does it make sense to play games in the first place? Does it make sense to seek an escape from the confines of a reality we can't find meaning in ordinarily and just look for comfort in a sequence of ones and zeros telling you you can do a parkour roll off a straight 40 foot vertical drop?
Does it make sense that 370 million years ago, our ancestors crawled out of the primordial ooze and through the chaos of the universe came to be us? 370 million years of evolution. And this guy put fucking propane in his oxygen tank. Hi, hello, my name is Doe. Hope we're doing good. I gotta make this quick. Waterburger's on the way. And I gotta say one thing. What makes no sense about Dauntless is a behemoth called Valamir. This double caked up alien beetle from space with a disco tendency makes no sense. It's got way too many bubbles ro rotating around the behemoth at a time. You can't dodge them all. You get hit. You dodge other attacks. Get hit by the bubbles. It's got lasers spinning around that hit you when you're next to the behemoth. You can't even see them and they're blapping you. So this behemoth is bullet hell. It makes no sense. It's not blind the game. That's all I gotta say. Enjoy the rest of Macro's video. Peace. Yo, what's up? Moki here. Titanfall 2 makes no sense. Look, look. I have a passionate relationship with Titanfall 2 and love it very, very much. But there are some things that do not make sense about it. Why is the game where I can do this... Wow. The same game where I can do this... Sitting behind my A wall with my chopper going... What do you want Titanfall 2 to be, Respawn? Also, why is it not free to play yet? Come, come on. We, we all know that would break the internet. Also, why the hell can a pilot destroy a sentry to it with one punch, but my Megaton War Machine takes three? Why can I not high five Marvin? Respawn knew exactly what they were doing and deliberately tortured us for years by forcing us to leave Marvin hanging again and again and again. Respawn, come back and fix this humongous injustice. Also, can you explain to me how Titans spawn in the Boomtown map? That's... that's a hollow dome. Look! This open air map has a ceiling! I... I love this game. But damn, Titanfall 2 makes no sense. So I asked Cooper if he'd do a little segment for CSGO, and he responded that, yeah, he'd do a bunch of like memes and stuff, and I thought that that was just going to be part of it, but that ended up being the whole segment he sent me, so it's just a bunch of memes, and I'll show you a clip of it. <laughs> oh! I speak pussy too. <laughs> Antifa took my dog. Flashing over. Oh! Ah! But yeah, you get the point. Anyway, follow Cooper, he's a dope dude. Viva Pinata makes no sense. Now, some people love farming sims. I hate those games. They're, they're too laid back for someone like me. But Viva Pinata, that's where the party is. Party animals, man. In this game, you raise animals and grow plants. But they're not normal animals. They're pinatas. And you also have a shovel. And with this shovel, you can dig holes, cut grass, or beat the crap out of every animal that you've raised. Now, this makes no sense. Why does it make no sense? Well, there's no reason to beat the crap out of the animals that you have and yet it lets you do it. You can spend weeks building a gorgeous worm family and literally when you're bored of them you could just end their lives and break their bones. Sure the shovel is used to stop bad animals from coming onto your farm but it's hilarious that you can literally abuse every animal that you have and what happens when you do so? You get a candy, a reward, a delicious treat for ending the life of something dearest to you. Anyways it's a great chill game, highly recommend. What's up, Macromaniacs? I'm Bisley, and today I'm gonna to be talking about my favorite game and why it makes no sense. Now, over the years, I've played a lot of video games, but I can only choose one here, and by far, the ones that mean the most to me are the Spider-Man games. I mean, who wouldn't love swinging around New York City as this iconic character? And that's why I've chosen to talk about the obvious one here, the greatest Spider-Man game of all time. That's right, Ultimate Spider-Man for the Nintendo GameCube. Yes, I'm serious. No, it's it's not a joke. No, I, I really like this one better. What? No, don't leave. Don't. Where are you going? Don't leave. Right? Are you kidding me? Stop. Come back. Come back. No, don't leave. 
Now, Ultimate Spider-Man may be old, but this game still holds up. In it, you play as not just the hero, Peter Parker, but also the main antagonist, Eddie Brock, or Venom. The game takes you through a classic Spider-Man story, but lets you experience it through both perspectives. It picks up right around the origin of Venom and takes you through the character's growth and how their stories ultimately collide. The story is fun, the gameplay doesn't get stale, and there are multiple cameos from other Marvel characters. I mean, seriously, they got Human Torch just for the time trials. But what stands out here the most is the masterfully done finale. Throughout this game, the player gets to experience how powerful Venom is firsthand, while also playing as Spider-Man who pales in comparison strength-wise. And in the end, when you're given that objective to stop Venom, and he uses every power you've been using throughout the entire game against you, the odds feel stacked and definitely not in your favor. But overcoming those odds is one of the most satisfying game endings I've ever experienced. So while Ultimate Spider-Man may not have all the bells and whistles that modern games have, it did do exactly what it set out to do and i'd say it did it pretty ultimately oh shit yeah what didn't make sense that was the whole point of this i just wanted to talk about the game uh okay i only have like a couple seconds left um so there was this part where venom ate a kid it was weird don't ask about it and there was a balloon and it floated up where the balloon go oh god i'm running out of time where the balloon go where the balloon go <laughs> hey guys boom razzle here one of my favorite games of all time is Age of Empires 2, but it makes no sense. Age of Empires is a medieval, real-time strategy game. It's like Roller Coaster Tycoon, but instead of coasters, you got castles, and instead of theme park guests, it's victory through combat. This game is a series, too. There's Age of Empires, Age of Empires 2, Age of Kings, and Age of Empires 3, Age of Discovery. So there are three Age of Empires games, but the second one is the most popular. And then in 2013, an HD version of Age 2 came out, but then in 2019, the definitive edition was released. So it's the second game in a trilogy, and it came out three times. So that doesn't make sense. Moving on to the game. Units in Age 2 sometimes like to moonwalk, and catapults can blow up trees? I don't remember learning this in history class. And finally, Age of Empires has ridiculous cheat codes. I mean, you got Flying Dog, Angry oh, Llama, hey, and of course, Machine move? Gun Car. And for these reasons, I think, Age of Empires makes no sense. Hi, Macro. One of my favorite games, I would say, or at least series, I would say, is the Dark Souls series, specifically Dark Souls 3. And one of the things that is the most, like, ridiculous thing about that series is at the beginning of every game, there is, like, an old, decrepit woman that is just babbling on about just nonsense. Without really knowing why. I think the majority of Dark Souls players just have no idea what she's talking about. Does anyone really try to figure out what's going on in the Dark Souls lore? I know I haven't. I just play it for the big boss fights. So whatever's going on in that screwed up world, they're doing a really bad job of explaining it. Video games, video games, they were made to give people enjoyment, a sense of escapism from reality once in a while just to relax, have fun, take time off. That was the purpose of video games and it really worked out. People were having fun and one of my favorite games is League of Legends. But you know what I don't get about League of Legends? It's just so f Toxic! Well, I just want to play the game, enjoy it. It's a good game, but the thing is, the community is so toxic. I just want to play, but there's either a feeder and a bot lane, or some people are like jungle diff, and top lane never moves from that lane. And the thing is, that I just confuses me is there's nothing wrong playing Blitzcrank top. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys really enjoyed that. Once I get my a million plaque, I'll open it live on Twitch. Here's my Twitch. You should follow it. And, uh, you know, while you're following stuff, why don't you follow my Twitter? Macro, you have a million subscribers on YouTube, but only 30,000 followers on Twitter. Fix that. <laughs>